Okay, today we're going to talk about the um, notion of factorial designs. And these might be two-way factorial designs, might be three-way factorial designs. Um, we could go up to higher powers, four, five, six-way <laughs> factorial designs. Anyway, okay. And um, when we do these more interesting designs. I say they're more interesting because a one-way design, which we've already been describing, um, is very simple. We have one factor and we have multiple levels of that factor. But we're basically looking at one factor, which might be treatment, it might be nitrogen level, it might be sucrose level, um, but we have one factor um, or one, one thing that we're calling treatment. But I've kind of hinted um, at one of my one-way designs, the, in particular the control and the plus sucrose and the plus fructose. Um, you know, sucrose and fructose, the treatment here is adding sugar, but these are qualitatively different. So can you imagine sort of a, a fourth treatment that might be quite interesting to look at here? Yeah. I think you probably can, plus sucrose and fructose in the medium, right? Because maybe um, it's the combination that produces an interesting result. So let's imagine uh, our contrasts that are possible. What if we were to take these two and contrast those two treatments to this one, okay? So um, contrast one, What is that question that we're asking there? What is different about these two treatments from the treatments number two and four here? Uh, well, the difference is the presence of sucrose. So we're looking here at the effect of sucrose addition to the median when we make that contrast. So um, we can imagine also asking other questions. So let's um, look at this one. So we'll rewrite this, same four treatments. What if we were to actually compare these two treatments to these two treatments? So we make a contrast there. So contrast two. What is that contrast telling us? Well, if we look on the left side, there's no fructose. If we look on the right side, there is fructose, right? So we're looking at the effect of fructose. Now why might that be more interesting than our last design where we didn't have basically this additional fourth treatment here? Well, Why that might be more interesting is that the only thing we can compare the fructose effect here really is um, the control which had no fructose or we can compare it to the sucrose treatment but we can't ask the question generally does fructose produce a result because it might depend on whether sucrose is present or not. But by adding this fourth treatment, we begin to get at that question. I'm jumping ahead of myself a little bit here, but I wanted to just point out that we could actually um, do these interesting contrasts if we had this fourth um, treatment here of both sucrose and fructose. Okay, so we're able to ask um, interesting questions. Um, when we do this. And, and maybe the fructose question, the effect of sucrose and the effect of fructose questions are a little more general here because we've got sucrose added to two treatments and fructose added to two treatments. And that allows us to strengthen our test of those effects. But there's another um, interesting thing about this experimental design. So if we look at it carefully, what we have here is um, uh, four treatments right so uh, if we have four groups all together our degrees of freedom for our numerator when we're doing a, um, a one-way ANOVA is a minus one or four minus one or three total degrees of freedom what's our degrees of freedom when we're doing this particular contrast well it's the number of groups we have two groups CL and plus FR compared to this group. So we have two groups that we're contrasting. And so a minus one here is two minus one equals one degree of freedom. So 
looking at degrees of freedom here for these contrasts. And we are looking here at this um, uh, contrast, also having a minus one or two minus one degrees of freedom or one. Now, uh, last time when I did this, you noticed that um, the degrees of freedom of our contrasts added up to the total degrees of freedom of all possible contrasts um, among groups, and here it does not. That must mean there's a third possible contrast. that is independent, right? Because we don't have a complete set. So this is an incomplete set with contrast one and contrast two. So there must be some other degree of freedom out there associated with some other test that's going to be quite interesting. <clears throat> and so that, I'm gonna give you a hint right now. I'm not gonna hold back. Um, Basically, we're, with this design, we're able to look at the effect of sucrose, the effect of fructose, but we're also able to look at a third question, which is, does the effect of sucrose depend on the level of fructose? In other words, these are what we call additive effects, the effect of sucrose, the effect of fructose. But we're able in this third contrast, the one that's missing right now, the third one, to ask whether the effect of fructose depends on the level of sucrose or vice versa. Does the effect of sucrose depend upon the fructose? And so that third contrast is going to be really, really interesting um, because so many things in biology uh, involve that interesting second level question. Does the effect of something depend on the level of something else? That's often the more interesting question than is there a sucrose effect or is there a treatment effect? Very often, the more sophisticated question, once we know the answer to the first one, is that, oh, does that effect, though, depend upon something else? And that's where we get into really interesting biology. Before I get there, though, I want to show you another way of arranging these four treatments so that you can see these contrasts a little bit better. And that is to draw uh, the factors as perpendicular to one another. So factor, um, and now I'm going to kind of redraw the control, okay? Um, the re one way to think of the control is that it is lacking sucrose. And we are, in fact, um, creating a set of treatments where we add sucrose, all right? So we have minus sucrose and plus sucrose. And over here, if we look at, so this is factor one, and if we look at factor two, if we call that minus fructose and plus fructose, we see that we're actually producing all of our treatments. So this is the control, this is the plus fructose, this is the plus sucrose, and this is the plus both. Okay, and one neat thing about drawing it this way is you can kind of then see our contrasts really clearly. The contrast of this group versus this group, what is that telling us? It's the sucrose effect, right? So when we look at the mean comparison from here, y minus sucrose to y bar plus sucrose, that contrast is telling us about the effect, the additive effect of sucrose. And likewise, if we look at this column and this column, instead of these rows, what do we have? We have minus fructose and we have plus fructose and we have the means associated with those. So when we contrast those means, when we compare those means, and I literally contrast, so this is, this is our contrast one, this is our contrast two, um, we are comparing those rows and those columns to each other. And the third missing contrast, you can kind of think of it um, in terms of, does going from here to here differ depending upon whether sucrose is present. In other words, does my fructose effect, which is going from left to right, differ depending upon the level of sucrose? And what we're going to see is we're going to actually tell that by doing a third contrast, which is these two treatments versus these two treatments. Because if there is no dependency of the sucrose effect on the fructose effect, they're just additive, we're going to see this diagonal is actually 
equal to this diagonal and there's no difference between those means across those the diagonal this way and the diagonal this way. So, so isn't that a, kind of a neat way of, of kind of reconfiguring those four treatments and thinking about it in a different way so that you can actually see how we're judging the sucrose effect, the fructose effect, and the dependency effect. Well, we can take this to higher level factors. So I, I just showed you a two-way factorial, right? It had two factors. Um, but we can also do that with three-way factorials. How might you ask? Can we do that? We can do that by drawing a cube. Okay. Now, you know, some of us are artistically challenged, and I'm probably for myself in that category. <laughs> um, but with a little practice, we can get better at drawing cubes. And, um, and we can see that we could put factor 1 on this axis, minus and plus. We could put factor 2 on this axis, minus and plus. And we could put factor 3 on this axis, minus and plus. All right. And we could have a 2 by, oops, let's put this down here. So we can really see it's a nice Rubik's cube. Well, with 2 by 2. Um, so we have a 2 by 2 by 2 factorial. So this is a three way in the sense that we have three factors. And these are the levels within each factor. All right, so that's a three-way factorial. Now, it does get a little harder to depict four ways because it's really hard to draw in four dimensions. But you can actually do it if you um, create uh, cubes sort of next to each other. Um, so maybe you have a fourth treatment, you know, and you have um, another cube over here. Okay, the hard part here, though, is that you can't see that this factor four here, which might be, you know, some low level of something and a high level of this, you can't see clearly that you have every level of factor four with every level of everything else. But, you know, the, the two separate cubes can indicate that. So two and three-way factorials, anyway, are very nice to be picked. And what I want to emphasize, too, is that, you know, I've drawn two ways and three ways with only two levels of each. But you can easily do this for um, two by three factorials, for example. So two by three factorial, what is that, a two-way or a three-way? It's a two-way because we have two factors, right? And we can divide, though, one of them into three treatments and the other one into two treatments, right? So we have factor one, which has levels A and B, and we have factor two up here, which has levels A, B, and C. Okay, so that's a two by three factorial. We're gonna have three, three times two treatments uh, total that we're gonna expose our individuals to. Um, what would a three by three factorial look like? Now maybe you can take a moment and draw it yourself, but I'll go ahead and do that. All right, so we're going to split each side into three. How about a five by five factorial? These are all two-way designs, right? Five by five factorial, we're just going to divide each side into five. Sorry, that's not very neat. But you can imagine we have treatment, treatment levels A, B, C, D, and E within factor one. So what would that be? For example, CO2 levels, we could have five CO2 levels, and then we could have nitrogen level up here, and we might have five nitrogen levels, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and 0 0.4, okay? So these you know, stand for some, some parts per million CO2, these stand for some nitrogen level. So both of these though, so that's a five by five factorial, they are two-way designs. And likewise, with our cube, we can draw, you know, a three by three by three factorial. Now there's our Rubik's cube, right? I haven't drawn it too nicely here, but we're gonna draw a Rubik's cube. It's gonna be trifurcated on all the sides. There we go.
Right? And so that very nicely shows that all the factors are independent of one another, that they, they cross at right angles, right? So even in the middle here, if we could see what was going on here, if we had dotted lines kind of going back, we could see that everything's perpendicular to everything else, right? And so we can examine these factors as independently varied factors. So yeah, this is a three by three by three factorial. It's a three-way design because it has three factors. Of course, we could increase that to six. We could do any, any kind of design like this, but this is a really nice way of depicting experimental designs and two-way and three-way work the best, but you can again add a separate cube for four-way. How do you do five-way? Uh, it does get hard at that point, but you can describe it in the same kind of fashion. All right, so I just wanted to show you this. This, is, this structure, by the way, is going to be um, used when we have nesting and things like that. And we get other more complicated designs. It really helps us to see the relationship among factors when we can look right there on the, on the design uh, description. We can see a, pair, a perpendicular line there, and that says uh, these levels are orthogonal to, to each other. That is independent, and so we can treat them as a factorial design. Okay, I think I'm going to leave it there. Um, have a good one.